These are probably the most exciting earbuds from Jabra to hit the market recently, the Jabra Elite 7 Pro Active Noise Cancelling Earbuds. It retails for $199 US dollars and it really is meant to replace the Elite 75T, bringing some improvements like smaller earbuds, bone conduction sensors for better call quality in windy conditions, better battery life of up to 8 hours in the earbuds, and an extra 22 hours in the case with active noise cancelling, ear tips that were redesigned to fit better, and now you can use either the left or the right earbud independently, while with the older model, the Elite 75T, you could only use the right earbud. So yes, there are some big improvements, but there are also some trade-offs. One of my favorite 75T features is the ability to connect two different devices to the earbuds at the same time and take calls and listen to media from either one of them. But this time, Jabra has done away with multi-point pairing, instead settling for the 7 Pros being able to do independent left and right usage. Now, of course, there are some other trade-offs which I will be covering in a separate video which is going to be an in-depth comparison with the Elite Active 75T and the Elite 3. So do subscribe and ring the notifications bell if you don't want to miss out on those videos from this channel. But for now, I'm going to compare them to my current daily driver, one of the best noise cancelling earbuds in the market, the Sony WF-1000XM4. We're going to be looking at fit and comfort, features, sound quality, phone call quality, noise cancelling performance, and Bluetooth audio lag for gaming and watching videos. The 7 Pro comes in a small compact case that's about the same size as the XM4s. It supports Qi wireless charging and charging over USB Type-C, although I am pretty curious about why the port is located right in front. Now, I don't hate it, but I would have preferred it to be less visible, maybe somewhere at the back, the side, or anywhere else, but not the front. The earbuds fit pretty snug, and they just plug right in with much less fiddling or adjustments needed compared to the Sony's. But these do fit a bit looser. Some people may prefer a tighter fit, but these being looser does feel a bit more comfortable to wear over a longer period of time. Unlike the XM4s, these have button controls instead of touch panels, so there's more tactile feedback when toggling between ANC and transparency mode or controlling your music or volume. And yes, these buttons they do have volume controls by default. In contrast, the XM4s don't have volume controls unless you activate them in the Sony Headphones Connect app. And even so, you'll have to sacrifice one of the default control functions, which is not ideal. So as far as controls are concerned, I prefer the Jabra's. Another thing I like about the 7 Pros is my sound calibration. Now, the previous Jabra models had that too, but I just love how it's so easy to get these earbuds to sound better. You basically take a hearing test in the Jabra Sound Plus app. The earbuds will calibrate its sound according to how sensitive your ears are to various frequencies, and suddenly, you'll be hearing details in your music that you've never heard before. Of course, if you still prefer to tweak your sound manually, you can do that from the graphic equalizer, or just pick a sound preset that you prefer in the Jabra Sound Plus app. The Sound Plus app also has options to customize the Jabra's button controls, tweak its noise cancelling, and hear through transparency, and get software updates over the air. It may not be as feature-rich as Sony's Headphones Connect app for the XM4, but it's got almost everything you need. On the other hand, a huge advantage the XM4s have over the 7 Pros is being able to stream audio over the high-res LDAC audio codec, and it is also high-res certified, and that certifies its ability to reproduce double the frequency range of regular earbuds while the Jabras support only the standard AAC and SVC codec, so these cannot be considered high-res earbuds. So if you're an audiophile, you might just go for the Sony's even if 
these are more expensive simply because it's got the ability to stream high-res audio. But let's assume that you don't really care about high-res audio that much, you simply want great sound quality, they both are actually quite comparable in terms of sound quality. For example, they both sound just about as sparkling in the highs, their sound staging is just as open and airy, and in terms of bass performance, they both reproduce just about as much detail in the upper bass frequencies. As in, you can sort of pick up just about the same level of graininess in bass guitars. However, I did notice that the 7 Pros are a bit meatier in the lower bass registers than the XM4s, so bass heads might get a bit more kick out of the Jabras. But I've also noticed that Jabra has taken a step back from the thumpy, impactful bass of the previous Elite models and instead had gone for a more balanced sound signature in the 7 Pros. That being said, these are a bit more laid back in the mid-range than the XM4s, so vocals are gonna sound a bit more soft and more distant. Its track separation is just as clean as the XM4s at about 50% volume, but at higher volume levels, I've noticed that the XM4s can maintain its track separation and clarity better than the 7 Pros. And speaking of volume, I've also noticed that the 7 Pros do sound a bit softer than the XM4s by about 5-10%. to 10 Not a huge difference really, but it's still something to take note of. Overall, I feel that the 7 Pros sound really good for its price, but of course, if you're gonna stream high-res audio and enjoy all that juicy goodness, the XM4s being high-res certified and having a lower noise floor than the Jabra's are gonna be much more capable of handling that. Jabra says that the 7 Pros are all about call quality, so I'm pretty hyped about this next test. I'm going to compare its call quality to the XM4s, and as usual, I'm going to play some really loud cafe-style background noise to simulate making a phone call in a noisy cafe. Background noise, Jabra Elite 7 Pro, record. I'm now making a phone call in a noisy place using the Jabra Elite 7 Pro. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, that he tripped and he fell and he rolled on the ground. I am now making a phone call in a noisy place using the Sony wf 1000 xm 4 The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, that he tripped and he fell and it rolled on the ground. I think it's pretty clear that the Jabra's call quality simply sounds better. Its background noise cancelling was quieter than the Sony's, and my voice sounded quite clear too, while the Sony's had my voice sounding a bit more bloated. However, its background noise reduction wasn't perfect, it had a choppy quality to it. That being said, these still have one of the best call quality I've heard in a pair of earbuds. For the noise cancelling test, I'm gonna play the same background noise as before. Let's see which of these earbuds have better ANC.
I think it's safe to say that the XM4s are much more effective at cancelling noise. That combination of foam tips and powerful active noise cancelling is pretty hard to beat. The Jabras were also cancelling quite a bit of that low frequency noise, so you will get decent noise cancelling in general, just not exactly best in class. Now we're going to look at how much Bluetooth audio lag the 7 Pros have when playing games and watching videos on both Apple and Android devices. The Apple device that I'm going to use is the iPhone SE 2020. For Android, I'm going to use the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra. First, the gaming audio lag test. As a reference point, let's see what the internal latency looks like on the iPhone SE. This is audio straight from the iPhone speaker. Now, the 7 Pros, then the XM4 earbuds. And then we repeat the same test on the S21 Ultra. So, as we can see, the Jabras had more Bluetooth audio lag, averaging at about half a second, while the Sonys had a bit less latency. So, while I would use the 7 Pros for other things like listening to music or watching videos, this will not be my first choice for gaming. But please note that this only applies to playing games or real-time content. If you're simply watching videos on your phone using apps like YouTube or Netflix, you're not likely to get much or any lag at all because these apps have their own latency correction that automatically delays the video so that it syncs up better with the audio. Like this. Hey, what's up YouTube? This is Aaron. Welcome back to another video. And today, we're going to talk about the improvements that the just announced iOS 15 will bring to the AirPods Pro and AirPods Max. There are five improvements that were announced at WWDC, like conversation boost, announced notification, find my app. To conclude, the Elite 7 Pros do have some advantages over the Sony's. Its call quality is better, and this is probably the main reason why people are looking at the 7 Pros. It's also got better water resistance in case you're often outdoors, and it's also got more total battery life than the Sony's, 30 hours compared to 24. However, I can't help but wonder why Jabra chose not to implement multi-point pairing on this, to me, that was the main advantage that older Jabra Elite earbuds had against the competition. Now, I may be wrong, but I think 
Jabra earbuds used to be the only ones that support true multi-point pairing. I don't mean simply switching connections between previously paired devices, but actually keeping both devices paired at the same time, regardless of device type or brand. At this price, I think it would have been smarter to keep that advantage because after all, the 7 Pros are targeted at the Pro user. Now it's become harder to distinguish from the competition, which is not where you want to be in such a noisy space as the TWS market. But overall, these are definitely worth looking at if you're looking for something awesome for making phone calls, the Jabra Elite 7 Pro. By the way guys, if there's a product you want me to compare the 7 Pros to, let me know in the comments. I've also got more videos coming up soon, so be sure to subscribe and ring the notifications bell to stay notified of new content from this channel. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please like and share. Also, a big shout out to my friends on this list who support this channel by contributing a dollar or more per month through the crowdfunding website Patreon. If you want to have your name on that list too, do join me on Patreon. Not only can you help keep this show going, you gain some pretty cool rewards too, like having your name displayed at the end of every video. And at the highest tier level, you can even get free merch. So link is in the box down below if you want to help support my work. I've also got a Discord server. Do join if you want to hang out. More videos coming up soon, so don't go away.